Hey there everyone, this is a quick impromptu tutorial on how to create a very basic thumbnail in GIMP. It is aimed at anyone who hasn't even opened GIMP before in their life and has absolutely no idea where to start. We're not going to be creating anything in the means of outstanding art here, it's just a very basic um, creation of the basicest of thumbnails which to be fair is what you want because most people don't spend a lot of time looking at thumbnails so there's no reason why you should overthink or over design it primarily the thing we're going to be exploring the most today is really how to um, cut out backgrounds from images um, and you know things like that I'm not a graphics designer by any means I only know as much graphics design as I need to make my videos so honestly half the tools in the toolbox here I've actually never used and probably a quarter of them I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what they do without playing around with primarily it's making this because a lot of people who are making videos don't uh, come from a graphics design background um, and GIMP has the worst documentation uh, of pretty much any software I've used which is weird considering how prevalent and open source it is but there's a weird sort of correlation between open source software and lack of proper documentation um, OBS is another good example of that but we're not here to talk about this so what I'm going to do is take this picture of me from uh, the last vlog I just published and cut me out put me in a generic public domain background I just randomly go grab off the web and um, add some text so we're primarily going to be using uh, these selection tools here. So let's go through them very quickly. The first one is basically a square selection tool. Then you've got the circle selection tool. And these aren't very useful if you're cutting out uh, objects from a scene, for example, me in this thumbnail, uh, because I'm neither square nor cylindrical. Now we're going to skip over the lasso tool, or the free select tool for a second, and go to the fuzzy select tool. Fuzzy select tool basically uh, selects pixels and pixels around it that are similar to each other. So if I was to select the wall here, uh, it selects all area here. Now with both this and the color select tool, you have a threshold. The higher the threshold is, the more objects around will be selected. Now this is so high that every single pixel is in the threshold. So just drop that bit down again. And then even this is very high, it's a uh, Bit hard to see where it starts and where it ends it's so high in fact we can check okay so it's basically selected everything um, that is yellow in the scene um, as well as some other objects which aren't exactly yellow but yellowish basically the entire background um, a tip with this and the color select tool is if you click and hold and then drag either left or right, you can change the threshold. So if you see as I move this mouse left to right, the threshold in the toolbox is also moving left to right. Now annoyingly, the sort of preview select it gives, so you see how the outline is changing as I drag, isn't quite the same as what you end up. So if I were to drag it, so at this point, it's basically just selecting uh, that corner in the wall there. But when I let go, it's uh, much bigger than it was. Uh, I can't just run out of my room. Color tool basically works the exact same way, but instead of selecting pixels next to each other, it will select all the pixels of similar colors within a threshold in the entire uh, layer. So whilst the, fr whilst, whilst the fuzzy select tool will stop when it hits, say, a color too different, so the fuzzy select tool, uh, uh, if I select this color, Drag the threshold down. So if I select this corner, it only stopped here because once it reaches this edge, the green stops it here, the dark shadows here stop it, the white stops it here. Selecting the same tool with the color thing, selects all the similar colored yellow here. This is super useful if you're sort of against a, a plain background. So if you were if you're against a, a white wall or even better, you know, a green screen, this would be a way to remove it super fast. Um, obviously. The trouble with plain coloured walls is that if they're very light, then the light parts of your skin, where the light reflects off your skin, will probably be removed. And if you get a dark coloured background, 
then the dark parts of your hair or your eyes or your clothing will be removed. Um, so it's really good for things like green screens, which are kind of in the middle and far removed from your thing. These are useful if you're looking to be against a solid white background, but typically in this case are not. So we're left with two tools, a free select tool and a scissor select tool, which I actually have only just discovered literally a few seconds before I started filming this tutorial because I never really paid any attention. Um, so the scissor select tool basically, I'll just get rid of uh, the, the, those. The scissor select tool basically snaps onto boundaries uh, using GIMP's uh, intelligent edge fitting. Um, and on the face of it, it seems very sort of intuitive and perhaps an easy way than having to manually cross your lines. Um, however, when I was playing around with it, um, you continue doing this until you get through the whole body, uh, perhaps taking more care than I am now, but just to illustrate how it works. And then you get back to the beginning point and you press enter and there's your boundary. Now, when I did this before, you can see the edges are quite jagged. I mean, it does a decent job. Uh, perhaps if you're in a rush, it'd be a good option to use. Not really the best tool in that sort of sense to use. Um, but again, perhaps play around with that. Depending on your background, it might work better. Perhaps if you have a background that's completely white, uh, this would be the tool to use rather than the uh, free select tool because perhaps the boundaries between your body and the white background are definitive enough. But what I've always typically used is the lasso thing. Now, with this, you don't have to be exact. This is kind of the rough distance I use when I cut out myself for thumbnails. Remember, most times if you watch this thumbnail, see these thumbnails, they are rarely going to be full screen. Uh, most times they're going to be a thumbnail uh, on the YouTube search and occasionally sort of a quarter of your screen. Um, and we're going to use feathering, which I'll talk about once we've finished here, which will help sort of disguise in perfectities. I mean, you can be as exact as you have the time to be, but obviously a lot of people don't have the time. Um, I'm going to speed this up just because it's going to be quite taxing watching me do this. Um, but I guess, yeah, be as exact as you have the time to be, um, but don't worry too much about making it exact. If you were making a high-end piece of art or graphics design, you probably sort of would like to take more care, um, but then perhaps if you were doing this commercially, you wouldn't be using GIMP. Um, and I don't know, but to be fair, free selecting is the same with whatever piece of uh, software you use. Um, a tip in doing this is to use your mouse wheel to just to scroll down. Um, so zoom in as much as you can, but don't just zoom in too much because again, you don't need to be exact because that'll take a long time. It's very laborious. You're not cutting it out exactly. Um, so like, I know I'm currently zoomed in 300% and that's typically what I do when I'm doing this. There are also other two things to consider when you're using the free tip tool. You can either do it point to point uh, zoom in and make point follow the points around or with free select tool you can actually draw a line now it might seem on the face of it that this is the one you would line would be the better way to basically get a more exact cut around um, but unless you have a very steady hand and I certainly don't you will actually more likely sort of miss the points rather than getting to be clear cut and honestly uh, if you zoom in far enough and make enough points it's when you've zoomed out again it's pretty indistinguishable from a clean line do you think to work as if you accidentally make a, a wrong cut the way to get rid of it is just pressing the backspace key and you can zoom back in like that now before you whichever tool you're using before you start selecting uh, your object cut out, you may want to consider turning on feather edges. Now, the difference between feather and non feather edges are basically a hard line or a soft line. I'll just cut a square here to illustrate. So, this is without feather edges. If I cut this out, you see that it's very sort of strong, whilst 
if I turn on further edges, and I currently have it sitting at 31, which is perhaps a bit excessive, but it will show you sort of just a bit. And then I delete that, you'll see sort of the difference here. Um, you want something very subtle, um, but it depends on the style you're going for. But a feather can help because hard edges look very unrealistic in graphics design. So you want to have this kind of soft edge around you and it helps sort of blend you more into the background you then will be using. So whichever select method you have used, you should end up with the object you want to remain with a dashed line around it flashing. Now, before you delete the background, there are a couple of things you need to be aware of. Make sure that you've selected your layer. The cut tool will only affect the layer selected. So if I was to select the background layer, for example, and uh, press delete, nothing will happen here. But then if I was to hide this, you end up with a silhouette of yourself, which perhaps is what you want to go for, but um, in our case, it isn't. So I'll just try and put that back on, there we go. Um, so first thing you want to do is you want to go select and you want to invert it. So rather than it cutting out the inside of the select tool, it will now cut out everything but what's selected. And then, we'll... and then as you can see, if we turn off a select, we now have our figure. Now perhaps looking back at this, my feather was a bit too uh, large and perhaps it would have been served better if it was a bit smaller, but that's a bit of a trial and error and you sort of get a gist of that. Um, also, I'm going to have to get rid of the area in here very quick. So some other tools, obviously you have the uh, move tool here, which basically moves the entire layer. After you've uh, got rid of the background, you may, it's not important, but you might want to go to layer or crop layer and it will move this yellow boundary around just the image. The only reason I do that is because I think it's annoying to basically drag around this small image and have these yellow lines way off there. Whilst if I, uh, if I auto crop the layer, then it's less annoying because it's less sort of all the way over the place. Um, you have an align tool here, so if you select your layer and then you do this, you can push it either in the middle, left, right, the middle uh, vertically, the middle, uh, the bottom vertically, the top vertically. This is useful if you want to sort of make sure your things in the middle. Your rotate tool is pretty obvious. Game looks a bit weird, you can't just rotate it, you've got to rotate the thing, then click rotate and it sort of re renders it in that shape rather than just rotating it. Uh, the same with the shrink tool, well, beware of your uh, link sections here to make sure that you keep your aspect ratio the same. Then you can scale it up or down. Uh, the shear tool, which is basically just making it lean. Perspective tool, which is basically making it do that. You flip, so you can flip it around, which is kind of useful as well. That's basically the most arduous of the stage. At this point, for a very basic thumbnail, you probably want to put text with either the title of the video or a catchy sort of uh, tagline. Um, something click baity is what you want to do. This is just your basic sort of text manipulation. So you choose a color. Kick, delete, big baity, kick baity. And yeah, you can align it here, change your font, whatever. Um, I'm just going to be like this for now because it's a lot of effort to find a font for just this. Again, make sure you drag it along. Um, and then me being me with my branding, I usually just chuck on my uh, logo into the corner. Make it a bit smaller. Uh, and then, yeah, you've got a thumbnail. Now, when you export this, you need to, for, think, for websites like YouTube, your thumbnail has to be less than 2 megabytes. Now this, because of whatever reason, is 3.28 megabytes, you can see down here. Uh, a good way to, the two ways you can go is you can either, if you still have GIMP open, you can just go to image size, uh, scale image, make it something smaller, like, 
and then try and see if that's any better it actually works now it's 1.436 megabytes um, that's one way to go about it usually things which are 720 by 1280 or whatever 1280 by 720 are less than 2 megabytes if you close GIMP and you can't be bothered reopening GIMP here's a little sort of life hack for you if you if this works on Windows obviously if you're on a Mac then it's going to be completely different software if you go and open and open photo gallery and you go to edit organize and share then with the thumbnail selected if you go to edit resize and you can just like still select the largest size it doesn't really matter resize and scale it will re-export the file hey river re-export the file um, but a considerably smaller size even if it's 1280 by 1080 if you do this it'll usually take it down to somewhere below or around mid half of a megabyte which is again these images don't need to be massive because they're just thumbnails so yeah that's a very super fast sort of basic guide to open up the game for the first time using it to slap together a thumbnail so hopefully that helps if you're going to make some very basic thumbnails you know I mean the sky's the limit of how complex an art you know make your thumbnails if you want to go all out there and make something uh, very sort of attractive and beautiful you can do but bear in mind you're making a very small image um, that's basically just there to grab your eye so it helps to have a lot of text uh, big text in your images so even when it's this small it's easily readable and that's sort of what attracts people and then obviously something that reflects what the video is about but I hope that's been helpful if you know you're making videos thumbnails do help sort of exposure and uh, draw in views so it's always good to have and this is sort of a quick guide on how to use GIMP to throw together a thumbnail hopefully it's been helpful please watch my other videos I need to be used um, thank you bye